Hi, I'm Zach from Corexcel, and what we're going to do today is we're going to show you a total guide to knee rehab. And we're going to break the injuries down in the knee to three separate regions. And we're going to explain to you what causes you to get injured in those areas, and then the exercises we use to fix our clients with those specific cases. So the first region is basically if you get injured above the kneecap or below the kneecap. So patellar tendonitis and also Oscar Schlatter's. The second region is, is basically the inside or medial portion of the knee. And the third region we're going to talk about is we're going to group everything together as far as MCL, ACL, and meniscus tears. Before I explain why these injuries occur, I just want to talk to you about the general PT protocol that's used in order to fix knee pain. So the main staple behind most PT programs is the knee over toe exercises, okay? So in order to strengthen the VMO. So these, this type, when you're on like a low box and you're coming up and down like this, or when you lunge and you get your knee really far forward over your toes, okay, all those work on strengthening up your VMO, your vastus medialis. And you can strengthen this muscle till you're blue in the face. And yes, you're gonna get some relief. You're gonna get, you're gonna take away some of your knee pain, but what's gonna happen is, is you're gonna, the doctor's gonna say you're clear, you're gonna go out, you're gonna start running, you're gonna start lifting again, and then all of a sudden, the knee pain's gonna come right back, or you're gonna end up tearing your meniscus, your MCL, or your ACL. And what I see is with a lot of professional football players that I've worked with in the past, they tear their MCL, their ACL, they go through the normal PT protocol, they build up their VMO, so their, their VMO almost looks like a bodybuilder's, and then the next season they go and play, and they end up tearing their ACL or MCL again, or they end up tearing on the other side. The whole key to eliminating knee pain and protecting yourself from knee pain is properly strengthening the adductors and also the glute medius and minimus, okay? Making your hip structure strong. This then becomes a shock absorber so that the knee doesn't take most of the force. If this is strong, when you go to run and jump, there'll be less pressure on the knee. And this is also what leads to people having basically bone on bone knees where they need a whole knee replacement. Their knees are getting worn out from a lack of strength between the abductors and adductors. So here's the VMO here, okay? Attaches right to the top of the femur head and goes right into the kneecap here. So again, because of where it attaches, it's really not gonna have anything to do with hip support or uh, hip imbalances. But like we're gonna show you, we are gonna be in later phases, we do strengthen the VMO but it's not as crucial as correcting the hip weaknesses. So if we hide this here, okay, here's your glute medius, okay, and underneath that is your glute minimus, all right? And when that's weak, what generally happens is, and I've explained this in other videos, and I'll put some links at the end so you can go into more detail about this, but your IT band then starts really overworking, okay, when these two are weak there. And if we look at the IT band, look at where it attaches, right at the bottom here, okay, of the knee, right there. So when that starts getting a lot of pressure, then the vastus lateralis becomes super tight, and as that becomes super tight, so does your rectus femoris, and then you get a bunch of torque, okay, under the patella, and this is when you start getting the tendonitis right through here. Now, if you're experiencing knee pain, okay, more into the medial side through here, okay, this is generally caused by the sartorius. Look where it runs. This is where you start getting this knee pain. This gets super tight down here. So when the adductor chain is weak, your gracilis, okay, your adductor longus, your pectineus, your magnus, then the sartorius overworks, okay, and that's when you start getting this knee pain down into here. If we look here to the front of the kneecap here, I mean, look where this attaches too. As this starts becoming very inflamed, okay, it starts putting a lot more torque right here on the bottom portion of the kneecap. And when I see Oscar Schlatter's, you know, obviously you're dealing with, with a growing spurt, but you're also dealing with an adductor weakness and an extreme glute medius and minimus weakness. So now you got the torque from both these two, and this just starts pulling. Okay, these two start just pulling right up into the section here. This is when you start getting the knee pain here. So let's talk about the ligament tears, okay? So this one's a pretty obvious one, your MCL. Okay, with the adductor weakness here, this is when you, the sartorius starts overworking, and then you go to cut, puts a bunch of torque here on your MCL. Okay, and here's your LCL over here. Okay, IT band, look at the proximity of that, so that starts tightening. And also when you, got, when you have the weakness, okay, up into the glute medius and minimus, and like I said, I explained this in other videos, 
your bicep femoris here of your hamstring, okay, becomes super tight. And then that, when you go to cut, starts pressuring the LCL, and that's when you can have a tear there. And if we hide this here, okay, here's your, your ACL. And I just look at this as when you have weaknesses on both sides, your adductors, okay, your glute medius, you go to cut the wrong way, and it just puts a ton of pressure onto that. And that's when you start seeing the tears in there as well. And as far as lateral and medial meniscus, um, it's the same principle. So this is Scott, okay? We, he, we did another video with him on how I fix his shoulder. We're gonna sh he's gonna demonstrate today the exercises that we use in order to fix his knee. Yeah, so, uh, you know, 15 years with pain in my knee. I, I started running now all last year. I wanted to get back into shape, you know, during COVID. And, you know, through all that running and all that pushing through all the pain, I ended up tearing my meniscus rather than going to PT, which I'd done previously and it didn't work. After three quick weeks here with Zach, I'm able to get back to normal. I started running again. And most importantly, I started lifting again. So now he's about uh, two months in with me and you're back to a full lifting program with your legs. Yeah, so I'm back to the full lifting program. I'm even back on the master program now. So everything's Squatting, good. Squatting, everything? Squatting, everything. No pain? No pain, zero pain. But I could totally feel a difference in my legs. And keep in mind that with all these injuries, even though they seem complex, we use the same exercise protocol for any of these knee injuries. Okay, so the first exercise here, and we're just gonna go through these exercises pretty quick. We're gonna provide a link for you, okay, in the details of the video. And then you can, if you want, you can go in there and there's some exercise in there for free like this one, where you can see the full video. So all he's gonna do is he's gonna cross his leg over like this, okay? He's gonna form a triangle right on his calf. He's gonna post his hips around 45 degrees. You can put an ankle away here. And then all he's gonna do is, is he's just gonna lift up and he's gonna maintain the hip angle. Don't worry about lifting too high when you first start and just make sure you feel it in your glute and not into the, your TFL, okay? Normal clams are, are gonna put more of the lateral rotation in to your hip and you're gonna get a lot more TFL during it, okay? This hip angle is gonna really allow you to lock into your glute. So this is the, the first exercise in our system. So with this exercise here, he's just gonna take this, this leg, he's gonna put it outside his hip line. He's gonna take this, he's gonna line this heel with the outside of the hip here. He's gonna lift up, he's gonna lead up, lead with his heel, and he's gonna lift up like that. You see how his hips stay around 45 degrees? That's what you wanna be at. Yeah. And this one, what I love about this one, it's really designed just to target the adductors here. If you get on a regular Nautilus machine, okay, and you do those squeezes or other type of adductor exercise, you really start feeling it in the TFL and into the sartorius if you have these compensations. This one really allows you to attack it right from the get-go. So you really want to feel that right here. If you want to learn more, we do have an app and you can learn all the testing, the weight loads, the reps, the sets. And one of the best things that you can do is to do private sessions with me. So you do everything right from the start so we can get you fixed. So this exercise here, okay, is designed to really get the, the top piece of your adductors into your brevis and longus, okay? This is gonna help you with your knee drive like this, when you're driving up your knee, so you don't get impingement. That's why we use this exercise here. It's gonna take this foot, he's just gonna put a little bit outside the ankle. He's gonna turn in here. He's gonna turn this, he's gonna keep this leg right underneath the center of his body, turn it at 45, shoulders stay flat, and he just lifts straight up the pipe. So now he's getting his adductor, and we're taking the rectus femoris, okay, out of the equation here. And he's just coming straight up that line, and you want to feel it, okay, all through this center point right here, okay, into your groin, right here, top piece. So what we're doing with this exercise here, okay, his feet are going to turn and he's going to pull back. We're going to be working the inside of the hamstring, the membranosis. The membranosis, the adductors like we talked about in the video, and also the glute medius and minimus, those are all interconnected in internal rotation. So by, all, by strengthening up the inside of the hamstring, it's going to take pressure, on the, pressure off the outside of the hamstring, but it's also going to make your other stabilizers of your hip, okay, your glute medius and minimus, and your adductors, it's going to make that whole chain strong so you can have even a stronger hip structure to support the knee. Okay, so what he's going to do with this technique is he's going to put his 
his feet slightly inside his hips, and then he's gonna turn, he's gonna touch. I should be able to slip my hand in between here, but you don't wanna to get too wide. It's gonna be at a 45 degree angle. He's actually gonna be tucking his hips under. He's gonna squeeze his glutes so he can squeeze his glutes together. He's gonna to squeeze on the inside of the hamstring. He's gonna maintain that line. And if you're doing this right, you're actually gonna cr you'll cramp on the inside of the hamstring. It's gonna be a very weak muscle. So once he passes all the hip tests, okay, and you can see that in our app if you purchase and also in those free sample videos, you can see some of how we test, okay? Then we go into different VMO exercises because he's built up um, with his hips and we know he's fully supported and that's when it's a good time to start doing VMO like this. And we also do different lunging exercise well with a knee over toe.